Hi, this is Sarah from sarahyip.com, Facebook, The Numbers Queen, and Instagram, sarahyip1111, with numerology for the one and only Grace Tame. I have been preparing this one for a while. Um, Grace's story has really, truly touched my heart and soul. Um, I'm sure a lot of you know she was Australian of the Year in 2021, very outspoken, um, powerful activist, uh, for children's rights and um, speaking out against abuse. So just a disclaimer that this video will contain references um, for mental health. Um, I am personally a survivor of anorexia and I have autism, uh, which is similar to uh, Grace. Um, I'm also a survivor of very long term bullying, um, in my case, emotional and workplace and school. So I just hope I can do this justice. Um, so let's just start with some big picture stuff with Grace and then we'll have a look at her chart. So the first thing is uh, Grace Tame. Her date of birth is actually public. So on her Twitter account, it comes up as the 28th of December and that's what I've used. So when you add up her date of birth, 28th of December, 1994, she comes out to a 36 or number nine life path, which means she's an old soul. Now, some people call this the global thinker, the humanitarian. We can definitely see all those themes at play with Grace. I just want to mention also that the background is actually part of um, the book cover for Grace's upcoming book, uh, The Ninth Life of a Diamond Miner. And it's interesting how much numerology actually is around that book, uh, which I'll talk about later. Um, so this is actually an illustration Grace has done. And I will be sending this to Grace for reference and feedback just to let you know. So Grace has come here to Earth again. When I tuned in to her soul contract, I experienced her as someone who has been healing children always, actually came across as part of her, her mission. Um, she's really got a very um, light and uh, influential energy. Uh, there's definitely a lot of um, boundaries and defenses that I was um, asking to permis permission to work with in order to create this. So um, just want to also recognize um, the traditional owners of the land on which I'm recording this on the Gold Coast, um, the Combamere people. So continuing on, let's have a look at Grace's chart. So I'm going to do a bit of a screen share here. Just give me a sec. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom in. So this is something that I do by hand for the people I work with. And excuse the doctor's writing, but I'm, I am going to explain this all to you in this video. So we know that uh, when you add up the date of birth, it comes out to the life path, which I've discussed for Grace. Um, so what it means is that Grace is actually coming to heal her soul blueprint chakra or zone. This is her belief in her ability to rewrite history. Um, it's very much about the topic of literally gracious surrender, letting go, moving on, getting people across finishing lines, um, completing tasks that we've been working on for many lifetimes. And really just yeah, showing people how to change and influence the big picture. So she's doing secondary healing on her third and sixth chakras. So the third is the solar plexus here, um, the inner child, the imagination, confidence, the go getter, the identity, which actually is a strong energy being healed right now in the month of June. Um, and as they say, it's never too late to have a happy childhood. That's that's the thing we're all playing with right now. And then the sixth chakra, um, this is to do with the third eye, mental health, psychic ability, um, faith in the future, spiritual connection. And 2022 is actually a six year for the planet. So all I'm saying is like Grace's numbers are very highlighted right now. And we'll see this elsewhere in her chart. So it's definitely um, one of her major times to shine, which is um, exciting. So the numbers that Grace is carrying they're, they're quite big numbers and it means often that the childhood how shall i say like requires a huge amount of effort um to to get through there's just so much there's so much 
is the best way I can put it. So people with those numbers, they're very much creators and they often have to sort of polarize between creator and reactor. You'll notice that that's actually the same collection of letters. So creator is an anagram of reactor. It's all about where you see yourself. Uh, some other famous people with these numbers, 36 nines, are uh, Renee Zellweger. At 36, she was reprising Bridget Jones, which um, in its own special way, I think gave women a, a certain uh, voice that they didn't have before. Kerry O'Brien, who's actually interviewed Grace. Um, Bob, Bob Irwin, a senior, so um, he's the one who helped to start Australia Zoo. So very much this is the number of legends. And of course, numbers are our potential. It's up to us how we use it. But what we'll see from Grace's chart is, um, oh, she is uh, pumping them to the max and very special person. So just really excited to be bringing you this video. Now, what I'm going to show you now, the life path, which I've just talked about, it's just a small part of the chart. Honestly, it's maybe 30%, although it is what a lot of people focus on because it's the introduction to what we're here to do. But the name is really, really important as well. Another 30% at least of the destiny. Now, I don't know if Grace has a middle name, um, but we know that uh, the name she uses, Grace Tame, has a lot of energy because so many people know her by it. So we call it the known name. And in her case, because she's a public figure, it's still worth looking at. And this would be the same as if, for example, I was doing a business reading because it's the professional name. The name is how we make a name for ourselves, and it very much influences our career and industry. So let's look at Grace's name. Now, I just want to let you know the way I find the vibration of the name. I'll just flick down here. So you use, excuse me, a little chart with all, I'll just show you up here, with all the letters and numbers. Um, you can use a, a calculator on my site for free to figure this out. In this case, I've done all the workings. So what we see is that Grace Tame adds to a one. So unique, one of a kind, singular, the black sheep, the first two, 100%, you can see that with her. So she's got a very potent combination. She's got the life path of the nine. She's been to earth many times. She's a natural authority. People trust her. She just comes in with a lot of wisdom. Literally the nine looks like a head, you know, full of maturity and, and thought. But then she's got the one career, which is that she's going to use that wisdom to push boundaries, to initiate things, to catalyze, to be a pioneer. So the positives of this is that she's actually more likely to get things done than traditional philosophical nines. The challenge is the inner conflict between wanting to start things and finish things, between wanting to help everyone versus looking after herself. And I think also we, we've seen this play out with her in the public eye. So it's interesting, um, there's a lot of shifts for Grace at 36, 39, she's up 36, 37 particularly, uh, right through to her late 30s. She's obviously not even close to that uh, now, but I would predict um, that her star will continue to rise and that she will continue to surprise us actually in terms of what she um, puts her hand to. She is very much an innovator. So her soul edge is a three, this is the artist, and we know that at 12, Potentially, you know, there was a very deep need actually for her to express herself. Um, and I'm just looking through. So it is, you know, it's sad. Um, in Grace's case, there was um, anorexia appearing around this time. So obviously, I'm not going to go into her private life. I'm really just working with what's in the public realm. Uh, but yeah, there was just a, she's got a really strong need to speak up. With the three, even looks like a mouth. Those people will say what other people are afraid to say but are thinking. So very expressive numbers as you can see. And then her inner dream, how she wants people to see her, how people do see her as a spiritual teacher, someone who's walked the walk, someone who's climbed the mountain um, and is helping others to climb it. Um, you know, she's she's really a risk taker, but she's there's a purpose behind it. It's not just to show off, it's really to to enlighten and to help. So that's where I feel um, you know, you look at these numbers and you see someone who's not motivated by money or, um, you know, the things that most of us probably consider important, which is probably really motivated by growth, by satisfaction, by, by, the, by that, that sense she has in her gut of having um, given everything that she has. So very interesting, very interesting. 
If we keep moving down and we look at how Grace's date of birth plays out in a grid format, so this is based on numerology, which you can see here, this is the table. So look, a lot of this stuff's on my site or in my courses, and um, I'm just putting it together in one place to give you a cohesive narrative. So what we can see easily in Grace's uh, date of birth grid is the flow of energy here. This is called the line of skepticism or inquiry. So it's um, created by having no three, five or seven in her date of birth. This is someone, um, they're actually very decisive and they're very uh, articulate. They're very believable, good communicators actually. And uh, when they speak, there's a certainty to it. And often they actually, they can take whatever information there is and they can sort of put it together into something uh, solid. So the, the good thing is there's that leadership ability. The biggest challenge in my experience with this line is they can sometimes accept information that's not true. And then it's hard to sort of change the mind, if that makes sense. And so there's a, it's really important for them, I think, regularly to update, update their knowledge and beliefs, whether it's through personal growth, meditation, and, you know, Grace does yoga, and, and just, you know, mixing with people who are, uh, are focused on improving and expanding themselves and it's not just about staying in the comfort zone so hanging out with the seekers shall we say you can see there's a lot of twos and nines and ones in grace's chart so she loves to start loves to finish sometimes you know the persistence it, it's challenging and look this is pretty common in um grace's generation i have some similar things in my chart where she needs a team basically to keep her going and that's beautiful that's not a weakness a lot of the children coming through now, actually in the 2000s, they have only a couple of numbers in their grid. Now, obviously, that's going to be um, supported by having their name and extra numbers. But overall, what we're seeing with the children coming through, yeah, they just have a couple of numbers and they truly need a village or even a constellation to raise them because they're specialists. OK, so a few more things here. So in numerology, we, we can do a lot of predictive work. It needs to be used very sensitively and maturely. I've also trained in counseling and my background is science. So I'm doing you know, my best to give the information factually. What we see in Grace's early life is she's learning about unconditional versus conditional love. Um, there's a lot of clearing around the heart chakra, getting things off her chest. Uh, we can see the biggest challenge for her, to be honest, it's, it's around being a girl, being female, perhaps some of the con this cultural constraints of that. Um, the, you know, she may have to grapple with things like what is a woman's worth, women's work, uh, a woman's place in society. There could be a lot of sensitivity, like sensory stuff, which could come with the autism, even psychic abilities. Uh, when I look at Grace's talk, I think it's pretty obvious that she's I'm guessing she might be clairaudient, that she sort of just, uh, I don't know whether she hears things or she, she just like hears songs, but I feel like she's, she's very guided and in a very sane way. And I actually have that too. And it's, it's a little bit like having the voice in your ear when you're a secret agent like James Bond. It can be helpful. You can isolate it from the, the fear and worry. So yeah, we see in Grace's early life, she's learning about stability versus instability until about 27. So what's really interesting is that's her current age. So I'm doing her chart on purpose, not just because she's in um, the spotlight um, and because I so just, I guess, relate to her at some levels. But to be honest, you know, at a soul level, she's just at a massive crossroads. So what we can see is that she's stepping into the cosmic parent energy now cosmic guardian social justice um it's likely she'll have more comfort from now on you see the six has got that lovely round tummy light like a pregnancy this can be um sometimes less work more home business more more family healing and we see the challenge will be probably just time <laughs> i mean we can see how popular she is now and uh, just yeah, being aware that she still needs quite a lot of space probably for this lifetime in order to continue her, her self-healing. So I just think it's yeah super interesting. She's stepping into a whole new life right now, starting a new life. I mean, we had to sum up the energy, it'd be sort of like that baby or fresh start energy. Okay, so yeah, and even in her personal years, this is really obvious. So um, the system I use, the personal year starts at the birthday. There are numerologists who start the personal year at January 1. What that means is my system can be up to a year behind. 
So where I would see grace in a um, one personal year of new beginnings right now, other people, anyway, long story, but it's on my website and I just want you to know that I changed it at the birthday. Yeah, I won't add it on. So yeah, anyway, long story short, what we see is that Grace has been in this huge climatic period in her chart where she's healing her history, her past lives, a lot of other people's stuff. She's stepping back into a place where she can put herself first, her needs first, her body first, and um, maybe even like downsize or minimalize some of the constant outreach she's had to do. So that actually perfectly coincides with her stepping down as Australian of the year. So there's a few more things I want to show you. I want to show you a little bit more about Grace's personal years. So look, I'm a numbers nerd, so I, I do everything by hand and I know you won't be able to read it all, but like I said, I'll take you through the main points. So a couple of really interesting things I saw here. Um, so Grace's father is famous cricketer Michael Tame. He's a one life path or so a pioneer catalyst and black sheep himself so i would suggest that uh he's probably been quite influential in grace's mindset of being um quite clear quite articulate definitely a leader um, at times maybe a bit black or white um a bit um, single-minded to an extreme so we see um he's a 28 10 one and they're very hands-on people interesting that he you know played played sport and at 28 his turning point uh, that's when his cricket career was really taking off so i just think it's fascinating that because i believe we choose our parents um we choose a lot of things in our life but then there's still free will of how that plays out and we still you know ideally we still respect and love each other through that process but anyway so i guess from her father grace learned how to literally hit back <laughs> and how to bowl them over. So excuse the mum jokes. This is my my outlet for that kind of thing. Anyway, so let's talk briefly about Grace's personal years and then we'll start winding this video up. So we know Grace was born in Tasmania, which has a six energy. It's just an absolutely stunning and beautiful place. I love it there. It's interesting because Grace is missing a six in her chart, which can suggest um, challenges around the home, the body image, um, feeling comfortable with with her wobble literally with the the vulnerability of being a human and often this can be solved or um, healed by actually working with the environment with animals with children families um, finding communities sometimes outside our family even um, where we can uh, be received with an open mind so we know that uh, grace's parents divorced at two that's actually showing in her chart as one of her greatest challenge years um, look, I see this actually a lot. I know it sounds strange, but you do see often the divorces are in the children's charts, and that's why you have to use numerology so carefully in some ways. I think people get their charts done when the time is right, not any sooner, not any later. Just a couple more things, and then I'm going to need to wind up because my kids have just come home. So very, very um, sadly at six, um, we know this is one of the challenge numbers actually for Grace, there was abuse by an older child. Um, Grace was always a bit different. She was the only girl in her school soccer team. Uh, she did love school, but it feels like, you know, there was this sense of being the odd one out. And we know now, you know, she had autism, had trouble reading social cues. Uh, we can see in her chart, there's a lot of ups and downs between about nine and 13. It was around this time that her anorexia began. She was being bullied in this all girls school. Um, this came off the back of living out of a suitcase for like most of her young life. So unfortunately, um, you know, the conditions came up for, for grooming by her teacher. It's, it's really, really tragic. It's hard for me to talk about this, but it's an important part of the video. So what we see is that, you know, at a very young age, you know, Grace has not been able to develop, especially this would be around the solar plexus and heart chakras of her own identity, free from interference. The anorexia, I've had anorexia myself around the same age. In my experiences around trying to fit in, literally trying to conform, trying to cut myself down to size, trying not to be so loud, so big, so, uh, I so, I don't know how to put it, like intimidating to others especially I think it happens when you know you're considered intelligent or a little bit more of a, a leader or challenger so what we see is then she had to change high schools 
Um, she went to the United States for several years. Even when I think um, her abuser was jailed, you know, she was really bullied. Just this whole period, she wasn't believed, and I, I can, you can still feel like it's very um, sensitive there, and it probably always will be. So words are really important to her, and I don't think it's a surprise. She's such an incredible public speaker, very careful um, with how she speaks. Um, she's very potent with her words, and she's actually got a book coming out. So this is the cover of her book, and. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it'll be incredibly successful. I can't wait to read it. It's interesting, actually, it comes out on the 27th of September, and that will be a nine personal year, nine personal months, nine personal day for Grace. So 999, which is her lucky number. And the title is The Ninth Life of a Diamond Miner. So I don't know whether she knows numerology, but I'm guessing she would see numbers like 1111 and things. Because when I look at her energy, Grace shows a lot of signs of being a star seed. We know that these people often have some pretty intense wake up calls around 13, 14. Um, in my experience, there's a lot more eating disorders and anxiety, and they're just incredibly creative, intuitive, psychic people. So, starting to wind this up, what we see is, um, you know, if we just move forwards a bit, we see that in Grace's pinnacle year, which is where she's really getting things off her chest. We've talked about that before. That's when the, there was that controversy with Bettina, Bettina Art into interviewing um, Grace's abuser and kind of favorably. Uh, around that time, uh, Grace also got married. Um, the marriage eventually dissolved. So she, I think, started to really activate and perhaps, you know, realize um, that she she had to keep up her energy and that her life was going to be a big life. So what we see in the last few years is, you know, she's been doing some momentous things with the help of lots of incredible people. So she started speaking out in public about her abuse around 24, her personal six year, which is, you know, a lot to do with healing mental health and perceptions of ourself as whole and complete. There was this incredible change in the law as a result of her activism. She met Max, her fiance, through a running app, which I think is so cute. Um, and I mean, they just have a beautiful, incredible energy together. Uh, she won Australian of the Year shortly after. So it makes me actually wonder if Max in some ways came in to help support and guide her through that. Cause you can, you can just feel it from here, how massive the wave of feedback was around that time so yeah this was all happening around her uh, personal seven eight years and this is where we're putting our crown on literally we're really coming back into humanity and we're trying to break cycles and so you can really see grace using her numbers perfectly so where she is now a very important age 27 as i mentioned she's just ending the first chapter of her her life, um, she's been doing a lot. She did a press club talk. She had the thing with the Scott Morrison and the side eye. <laughs> she started a foundation. She's launching a book. She got engaged. And it makes sense to me because as I've written here in big capitals, you know, especially from about December this year, you know, there's a lot here about starting her life, starting a new life, rebirthing. And uh, look, I just really wish her all the best. So this is not too long of a video because Grace is young, young person and old, old person, um, old person soul in the young person's body, if you excuse me. But I hope that this has shown you, I guess, how amazing Grace is, but also the power of just a little bit of self analysis to uh, understand ourselves and appreciate others as well in what they've experienced. So I've got to go because my children are celebrating incredibly loudly outside my door. Um, I just want to thank everyone who supports my work, especially those who've come in recently, particularly my Patreon group who sponsor me. Please check out the group if you'd like to study with me. It's a community-based venture. Um, you can find out more at Facebook, The Numbers Queen, Instagram, SarahYip1111, and uh, SarahYip.com, and I'll, I'll put Grace's details and her book sales details below this post and hopefully do an update as well when it comes out in September. So Grace, thank you for being you. Um, wow. And I just wish you the best. It's been a really hard start and I hope it's just 
so much better for the rest of your life. You really deserve that. Um, so let's wind up with a card and I'm just going to wind up with this card. So what we see is that, so you can't see it too, too good. Let me try this again. Nope, it's not happening. It's hilarious. Oh, there we are. So the card I'm getting to wind up this reading is the King of Wands. And this is talking about uh, inhabiting the king energy within ourselves. This is just as important for women as it is for men. Uh, so the king energy is where we are the sovereign of our domains. We decide what goes in and out of our lives and our bodies and our minds. It's where we take control of situations, not in like a um, grasping way, but just in a really assertive, um, assertive energetic way. So Grace has that ability. And when you see her talk, her voice alone is incredibly arresting. Everyone just goes silent. I honestly believe that she has been uh, doing a lot of healing work on the planet for many lifetimes now. And the positives of that is that I feel like just a little bit goes a long way with her, you know, just uh, listening to her for a short time or reading a couple of her words it sort of travels into your heart. And I guess the challenge is over seriousness. So let's hope that Grace has uh, a lot more comedy and lighthearted people and fun for the rest of her life. Um, I'll be celebrating that as well. So thank you so much for all your support and hope you enjoy this video. Take care. Bye.